open tonight's televised meeting after we came out of our workshop and ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Good evening, everyone. I will open tonight and ask if there's any public comment from the board this evening. Um, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, last night was their band concert, and it was great. There were lots of citizens of all ages relaxing and enjoying the music in the warm summer evening. It was a really a beautiful event. They did a great job. And next week, the Lions Club is supporting it, is sponsoring it. Also, uh, the DPW is now offering, through a state grant, um, earth machine composting units. They're selling them for $43 each, which is their cost through the state, and they're $109 if you, if you go down to the department store and pick one up. And so you just have to contact the DPW if you want to get one. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Any public comment from the public? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I own property out on a few pieces of property out on Howard Street. I've got a written request that I'd like to give the board tonight for uh, public uh, records, a public records request. I would like to know what the town has spent since January of 2006 to, to date on the litigation with me out there. So if I could give you this, Mr. Chairman, I assume sure. you're the chairman. I appreciate that. I'd like to come to the meeting. If you could, um, if, you, if I could come to your next meeting, which would be August 5th, just to talk about it, if uh, if you had the records at that point, I would appreciate that. Well, the, the town manager will take care of the records request and, and obviously assess how long it would take, depending upon what's being requested, as you just asked. So I don't know if it'll be on the next meeting. Our next meeting will probably be at the high school because it's going to be about the, pi uh, the pipeline, about the gas pipeline. Okay. So we may not talk about it then. It may be on the 12th. Just but the town manager will let you know. Perfect. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment from the public? Okay. So 7 o'clock. Joint session with the planning board to appoint a candidate to a current vacancy. So my understanding is that the planning board members are here. So if you want to come to the front, and if, if the chair, if Joanna, if you want to open your meeting. I would like to open up the planning board meeting on a joint session meeting with the board of selectmen on putting a appointing a member to our committee. Okay, so on, and your, your, your board is now open. Your yes, meeting. my three. Again. On the 14th, you, with the joint session of the Board of Selectmen, interviewed two candidates we for did. the vacancy. Uh, I was not in attendance, but I have watched on YouTube the meeting, so I am fully aware of the questions that were asked and of the presentation. Uh, there were two candidates, Mr. Matthew Allison and Celeste, McCain. Celeste. Why don't I have Celeste here? But I don't. No. Oops. I one. On the reverse side. Oh, there it is. It's printed. I'm sorry. I'm waiting for looking for a handwritten. So Celeste McCain Stover. Yes. Okay. So I will open up the discussion for the two boards to uh, discuss the candidates and then eventually get to a joint appointment. Just so the public is aware, the appointment will be uh, the majority members of the uh, eight people present. And the term for this appointment will be until next election cycle in May of 2015, at which point that person can choose to run for uh, the remainder of the term or not run as they, as they choose fit. And of course, it'll be open to anybody else who wants to run. So I will open up any discussion about the, the two interviewees and the two candidates for the vacancy. Well, I guess I can start. Um, 
during the um, on the 14th when we were talking to both candidates I felt that Celeste was obviously a hard worker a great organizer she did she saw something that was a problem with the solar bylaw and she organized her neighborhood and other people in town and to the planning board's credit she worked with the planning board to get an improved solar bylaw passed she persisted she did not go along to get along and um, jointly they produced a better bylaw to everyone's credit so I really appreciated that about her now um, I also kind of feel the same way about the other candidate, Matt Allison. Um, if he sees a problem, he gets right on it. Um, I know that last at the last planning board meeting, they talked about Force Corp and how what a great job they've done to improve safety. That would not have happened if Matt Allison hadn't persisted. They were, Force Corp was given a waiver, and he felt that it needed to be revisited because it wasn't really safe. And again, to the planning board's credit, they went back and Force Corp made huge improvements. It looks great, it's much safer, but Matt Allison deserves the credit for that. Now Matt, um, the first time Matt was elected, he received 1,400 votes from the electorate. Um, and this time when he ran, he received 43% of the votes so Matt has a lot of support in town now um, Celeste hasn't run so we just don't have information on how she would be supported so uh, looking at um, their backgrounds Matt Allison has been a civil engineer for 20 years he's uh, appearing before the planning board of Boxborough tonight in his official capacity at his at his work he, he mentioned to us that he has lots of he works with people who are, uh, work in town government and he has access to skilled trained personnel that the town has access to for, for, at no cost because of him um, I think um, they're both great candidates and I certainly hope to see Celeste um, in some capacity in the town but at this point I think that Matt just has much more qualifications and the planning board is a really important board in our town and we need qualified educated informed people on that board thank you I would say I want to thank both candidates for coming forward um, I was at the planning board meetings during the solo bylaw and I know how hard Celeste worked and she was at every meeting and I think that she did a fantastic job and I know she would give all of her energy to, to a role on the planning board um, I also have had an opportunity to see Matt Allison at the planning board meetings I think that his background in civil engineering is an asset to the board um, and I think given the backgrounds of the two individuals I, I agree with um, Phyllis that Matt Allison at this point in time would be a better candidate for the planning board um, and I hope that Celeste will will volunteer to serve in another capacity because I think her energy would be a benefit to the town anybody else from the board um, mr. chairman um, I also want to thank both candidates for um, putting their name um, in this process uh, this is an important appointment um, one of the things that um, that Matt talked about was his difference of opinions with the other board members. Um, we've had various committees over many years where there were differences of opinions. Um, I personally think that uh, Matt carries um, some important opinions that represent many people in town. Um, I think throughout the year that he was on the board he learned different ways of being able to convey that in a more effective way than he may have originally um, I like what Celeste talked about as far as um, involvement at the community level I think the planning board um, tries to do that and other boards try to do that um, again balancing with the legal requirements of what you need to do um, 
but I I'm come down on uh, Matt's uh, appointment because of his uh, civil engineering and his experience of actually having been on the board. Mr. Chairman, uh, I also would like to thank both candidates for coming forward and showing an interest in the town and this particular uh, assignment. I don't want to repeat what was said, but I think both of them are, are very talented and, and, and both could make a contribution to the town. Uh, I think the swaying situation on my point was the, uh, uh, the town support that Matthew got in, uh, in the election, uh, in both elections actually, and uh, therefore I would cast my, uh, my vote for Matthew Allison as well. Members of the planning board? Do you want to? Uh, Sure. You want to go first? Yeah. So, uh, Nathan Lockwood, member of planning board. So, um, yeah, I guess what I, what I would say about this topic is, um, you know, I think, you know, you know, I would also thank both the candidates for coming forward um, and thank them for all their civic involvement uh, prior to this. Um, it basically, as I approach this as a member of the planning board who's, who's worked with Matthew, uh, you know, there's a lot of, Matt's heart is in the right place. I've benefited from his insights and knowledge on a lot of topics. Um, I guess, you know, to, however, that said, um, I'm not prepared to support his renomination of the planning board for some very specific reasons. Um, you know, and I'd rather not be in the position of having to talk about this in, in you know, on, on YouTube, but, or on TV or whatever, but, um, you know, he, he has a, an excellent background. He's a smart guy. He's got a lot of, does have a lot of important, you know, values and interests of the town and t people in town at stake. Uh, what it comes down to is, you know, the balance of kind of uh, judgment and understanding how to pursue what you think is right versus knowledge. And um, I could cite several instances on the planning board where, uh, yes, there are places where he's made definite contr contributions, and you know I think there's plenty of cases where he's approached topics with an open mind, where he's been an I, I perceive him as an ally of mine in terms of you know being open-minded and being able to understand a number of situations. But um, in terms of nominating him to, as far as you know my where he's at now, where I'm at now, and where I think Matt's at now in terms of his understanding of the role, you know, you know his performance on the planning board in the past. <laughs> There's a few things that happen, specific things that happened that uh, happened repeatedly where, in my personal opinion, you know, Matt, whether he was right or wrong, uh, the way he, he pursued his agenda was insufficiently respectful for the conduct of a planning board member. Um, in a number of occasions, it, he, he does not demonstrate, you know, a, a high regard for our legal counsel for our reviewing engineers, uh, for certain staff members of the town, and for other town officials. He's fairly vocal about this. And uh, some of the results are we had a reviewing engineer quit, well, stop, resign from serving the town because of multiple instances of that board member's conduct. We had a member of the public who's with an extensive record of town service to Lunenburg, who just Mr. Slattery come in and, and essentially come into a meeting for the sole purpose of censuring Matt for his conduct in a prior meeting and his treatment of either a client or a reviewing engineer. I don't remember which it was. And in terms of, uh, you know, I think the, the, in his bat, you know, as problematic as those are, there's been treat, treatment to applicants where I just don't think it's represented the town in the right in the proper light, and uh, and I think you know uh, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on this, but I, I I think that his his I don't know attitude or how he views uh, legal counsel and legal counsel's role in how we make town decisions poses a potential danger to to the to the town from a legal liability standpoint, potentially. And uh, those are the reasons why, you know, I, I like Matt as a person. I think, as I said, I think his heart's in the right place. He's a smart guy. He did bring a lot to a lot of these discussions. And there may be a time where if, I think if he understands, has a little bit more self-awareness around these things, 
it might be the right time for him to serve the, t the town. But at this point in time, as someone who's responsible for determining who else is on the planning board at this point in time for this short duration, I don't feel comfortable um, supporting Mr. Allison. As, as you guys have all, as you folks have all cited, you know, uh, we have an we have an alternative choice here, uh, Celeste, who you know has demonstrated some positive qualities, and you know for. The, for the reasons I've enumerated, as painful it is to talk about, that is, you know, I would support Celeste at this time. Thank you. Uh, so, I think I'd have to agree with Nathan, and uh, I'd support Celeste in this case. Um, I think Matt was good for the planning board. Uh, he had some good ideas, or was always quick to point out things that were wrong. He could tell through his experience, he knew he was knowledgeable. He could say if something was missing, something needed to be added. But in the broader scope of things, he had a harder time bringing solutions. There's more problems that he cited and didn't bring much as far as how we're gonna fix those problems. And a lot of that tended to derail some of our conversations. And uh, I just think being a short, um, a short term, maybe we should try to get someone's new opinion. Um, so that's my reason for supporting Celeste. I support Celeste as well. Um, I'm a little upset. I think this is a political move. I see that smile on Phyllis's face. Um, I think we all know Matthew isn't um, someone that the planning board has gotten along with in the last year and has had difficulty getting along with. Um, and Force Corp, Matthew did have concerns on Force Corp, absolutely, we as a board issued waivers, but Chief Marino and Director Rodequins actually went to Force Corp and sat down and had a meeting with the owner and had a lengthy discussion about him moving the fence to increase that sight line. Uh, Matthew, at the end of, you know, three months later after the plans were approved, the site distance came up again for Force Corp, and that's when he expressed his concern around that. Um, I, at the last election when Matthew decided to run, I had had a conversation with Mrs. Bertram, who um, actually asked Mr. Kennis to run against Mr. Allison. And then you, Jamie, had a conversation here at the Selectman meeting, how you were gonna support Ron Albert to run against Matthew Allison. And Paula said, well, no, I'm supporting Ken, so let's all get around Ken. Now, at that same time, I was working with National Grid, I'm sorry, Unitel, I have National Grid, I apologize, over the solar, and the issue we had with the pole above ground. And Celeste was at that meeting, and Celeste and I, when we were walking out, asked me about running for selectmen. And the same thing, because uh, Sharon Jordan, with Paula, had talked Ken into running. Sharon brought Ken to my house and introduced him to me and asked me questions about the planning board and what a planning director does. And by the time Ken left, I told him I'd support him in his running for planning board. Now, as a person of ethics and honesty, I, when Celeste, we walked out and she said, geez, I'm interested in running. And I said, well, Celeste, you can run, absolutely. You're more than welcome to run, but I've already made a commitment to support Ken Chenis in this election. I wouldn't be able to support you if, in fact, you, you ran for that. So that's why Celeste did not run, because I know that was a question in the interviewing, but I, I had explained to her I already made a commitment to Mr. Chenis. So I'm concerned that I, I don't know how you haven't spoken yet, Tom. The four of you have decided that Matthew is the right candidate when you went out and found people to run against him. Um, we have over 30 emails. Kerry and I had a meeting in, over his unprofessionalism, the way he talked to the director on numerous occasions, um, even the interviews that he did on YouTube, if you watched them. He still is not looking to be a team player. Um, if he does not agree with what the board has voted, he's not gonna support that. And as a board member, when you don't support an issue, once that vote's cast, you, you, you have to support it. Um, it's the same thing with an override. You can fight against it, but once those taxpayers say yay or nay, you need to move on with that yay or nay. 
and I strongly um, am endorsing Celeste as well as my three peers. And I know Ken Chenis, which he, I advised him, he wasn't able to come. He said, who do I give my, and I told him to give it to Marjorie to give to you. And that got um, misplaced, but Ken is also supporting um, Matthew. So the whole planning board, I'm sorry, Celeste. So the whole planning board is in support of, of Celeste McCain to join us. And we have had the opportunity to work with Matthew for the last year. We have had the opportunity to work with Celeste for two years on the solar bylaw and just three months ago. So we're fomenting it only on working with the two of them, not on politics and not on who we can get and, and stick people with. So I need that to be spoken because I'm very saddened by this, very saddened. Mr. Alonzo, I want Thank to you. respond. Thank you. Before, uh, only because I have not spoken to it. So first, first I should start with the amenities that I want to thank both candidates for coming forward. I mean, we ask, there are many, there are many um, tasks and, and being on the planning board as, as uh, many of the positions in town are, are, are it's very time consuming and very uh, intensive as far as reading and as far as knowledge and as far as getting up to speed. So to come out for planning board is uh, really quite a statement for the two people involved. So I want to thank both of them because it really involves a big commitment. And it's unfortunate that there's not two positions because I think they'd both be good candidates. Before I say who I would be for and why, I, I do want to state that it is unfortunate that it would be anybody's idea that this would be a political appointment. I really want to stress that from my standpoint. I think that um, we've people got to interview them, people got to speak to them, people got to hear from the candidates, and we should have and this is maybe just me, maybe it's even naive. I think we should have more faith in the people that elected all of us, that we would have the wherewithal to choose what we believe or who we believe is the best candidate for no other reason than their presentation, their ideas, the way they answered questions and the way they've performed in the past if they have so performed for the town. So uh, I know for myself that is how I would select people, that's how I've selected people and how I continue would continue in this regard. Having not been able to interview them, but seeing the uh, candidates uh, in their interviews on the YouTube presentation at the planning board, uh, I was impressed by both of them. Uh, obviously, I had, I had known Mr. Allison, uh, and I've never met Celeste in person, but she did an excellent job answering questions and presenting herself. And to me, the, um, the one thing that puts one over the other is the fact that it is so intensive an experience, and to be a contributing member on the planning board takes a lot of time to come up to speed. And it would be my concern to get somebody in there who, who knows the planning processes and has not only the professional background, but also has been part of the board and knows the processes. Uh, I am not unaware of missteps and, and conflicts that arose from the board and from uh, Mr. Allison on his time on the board. But I think, uh, he came in in a way, I think even by his own admission, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but by his own admission, came in in a way and in a manner that was not productive and that he realized that and, and his idea about going forward in a different way to produce results and not just point out problems, which is always problematic, and I understand that fully. Uh, that, would, that, that puts him, to me, in the forefront of the two <laughs> candidates, and it's not like this was, they were miles apart. I think that to me, I chose him in the short term because I think we need somebody to be productive in the short term. And then I encourage Celeste to either run for planning board in May or should another vacancy arise either in the planning board or uh, on other uh, boards that she consider those because we want somebody like her to be uh, putting their, their hat in the ring and wanting to contribute to the town. But for this particular appointment, I would have to say that I would be for Mr. Allison as well. I just want to comment on the political statements. 
absolutely correct. When Sharon Jordan came to me and said, would you support Ken Chenis for planning board? I said, yes. I worked with Ken for 11 years on the computer advisory committee, and I know how hard he works. I know how intelligent he is. I know his level of detail and his attention to detail, and I think he's doing a great job. Um, I think it was unfortunate that, we're, that there weren't two openings because I would have supported both Matt and Ken. Um, I think that I think that I agree with you about his the underlying issues and the way he communicates, and I am hopeful that he has learned a lot from being on the planning board. And based on the interview, he's he's looking to change that behavior. But I also think that beyond Force Corp, I think bringing up line of sight, I think um, suggesting that all the plans be done in PDF format and be made available and be online, he, he moved that forward. I think that talking about impervious surface and when you make adjustments to a plan, you've got to look at the amount of impervious surface that you're creating and where that stormwater runoff is going to bring. I think he does bring a lot of level of ex experience to the table from an engineering background, and that's why I'm supporting him. And that is in, this is in no way political. It is not... I think I'm very for, I'm very happy that both candidates came forward. I think that they're both very qualified, um, but because of his civil engineering background, I think that at this point in time, and the fact that he has been on the planning board and there are a number of projects in process, I think that that's why I'm supporting Matt Allison. I also want to add, by the way, that I think anybody filling Toby Bacaza's shoes is going to be a big task because he really contributed for so many years in such a big way, in a positive way, to that board. So uh, they are big, big shoes to fill on that. And I want to thank Mr. Bacasa again, as I have in previous meetings, for all his years of uh, service to, to the town. Mr. Ebersole, you had... Yeah, I was just going to follow up on, on the comment that I had made before about um, Mr. Allison. And, and um, I actually think that dispute is good on a board. Uh, there's been dispute on this board. Um, I disagree with uh, 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 Joanna as far as um, there are still things I don't support that this board did. Am I going to campaign? No, but if there's another opportunity to, to discuss that, I would discuss that again. So um, I actually think there's a value to having somebody challenging the status quo. Um, somebody asked me, um, who I was today versus who I was 30 years ago. And I explained that I believe in good government in Lunenburg and that transcends political parties, transcends politics. Um, and I think Celeste is going to be a, uh, a good addition to the town, but I think Matthew is the one that I support at this point. I would just like to add that politics aren't involved at all. I just looked at both candidates. Uh, when we had the meeting, when we got to interview them, I asked specifically about waivers, and I thought that Matt very succinctly pointed out the value of waivers and why they are necessary and why they are sometimes important. And, um, you know, Celeste hasn't been on the planning board, so she really just um, wasn't able to answer as succinctly as Matt. So I, ju I just think his background um, makes him... You know, it's the town, the planning board for the town of Lunenburg. It's a very important position. We really have to have people with expertise in the field. So, can I just ask a question on that? How did you know he was in Boxborough this evening? I didn't know that. And I'm the planning board chair, and I didn't know Matthew was in Boxborough. Did you know he was in Boxborough and wasn't going to be able to attend? How did you know that, Phyllis? <laughs> I had a conversation with him. Okay. I don't understand the relevance of the question. Well, because the relevance is, is she is saying she made her decision based on the interviews. And I knew this dynamic. I had a meeting with Kerry last week and told her you were all going to do this. Did I not, Kerry? I had a meeting last week with Kerry and told her that the Board of Selectmen were over going to override the planning board on this nomination. I knew this last week, had a conversation with her last Thursday about this, and said you were all going to vote this way, because I could see the dynamic with Mrs. Luck and Mr. Allison, and with Mr. I, I'm, I'm not going to continue, but you could see the dynamic formatting. We all knew that, and we, 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 we were all afraid of that. And we all thought, well, we'll put our trust in you, Thomas, who we thought would really be the the caveat that would, would support the planning board. 
it, as the chair. I, I don't choose my vote as a support or against the support of the planning board's choice. I think you are. You're going against the planning board. The whole planning board has said we are choosing this candidate. We've worked with both. We are saying this is the candidate we choose, and you're vetoing our. That is incorrect. It is a joint appointment. It is not that we, well, you how's it come a joint to us. If it's five four. No, no. It's because it's eight of us voting together. It's not the planning board coming and saying, this is who we want, and then we either okay or don't okay that. We each, as each individual members, eight people get to vote on who we wanted. It happens to be the five and the, the three could have been anywhere. You okay. could, well, it's not that the planning board is coming to us saying that or not. Well, Gar Thomas didn't get interviewed for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, Mike Null, when he was appointed to sewer, wasn't interviewed for an hour and five minutes. But you're still saying that everything was treated the same. None of those had two candidates. The implication, the insinuation is actually distasteful. It is very distasteful. Yeah, well, I, at least we'd agree on that. We all agree on that. Very okay. distasteful. Very distasteful. It's sad. I'm sorry you feel that way. It's saddening. It's saddening that we would be met with two candidates and we don't choose who the three of you choose and so that makes it in and of itself distasteful? I'm, I'm not going to. You're, not you're gonna. assigning political implications to somebody when we're just judging people who are coming from the citizenry to be interviewed. And yet you're, you're, you're implying that something nefarious is going on. I absolutely am. Okay, that's fair enough. And absolutely. so now it's out there that you believe that. I'm yeah. sorry you believe that. So am I. I would entertain a motion to the appointment. I would move that we appoint um, Matthew Allison to the vacancy of the planning board for the term to end at the next election. So well, have I a second. Uh, could I make a comment? You certainly can. I, I just want to clarify, outside of the political remarks, um, just, <clears throat> you know, I, a lot has been spoken about the value of having opposing opinions on, on a board, and I, I totally agree with that. And I. In, in in many cases, I, you know, my main issue with with Matt's performance while he was on the board was not as much about his disagreements or the way he conducted himself between the members of the board. Um, you know, a lot also has been talked about what Matt brings to the board from a technical perspective. The the problem I have is that you know, so the board without Matt on it, you know, Matt did bring something. It was an addition. We do have technical advice in most of the matters we deal with. And usually that function is f fulfilled by the peer review engineer. And uh, the, the problem I have was, you know, the, cons the consistent opposition he had to our, our technical help and the fact that in practice, when you looked at the things he disagreed with our peer review engineers about, he was often picking arguments that once you got to the bottom of them really weren't worth certainly not worth offending someone over and were you know of questionable value to begin with so it's not bringing a separate different opinion to the board or disagreeing I think anyone who's worked with with me would say I often disagree with the people I work with and bring a different opinion um, I think you could say that for the other members of the board we don't always agree on everything we have pretty different perspectives it's nice to have someone with a really informed technical perspective who brings that too the problem I have is that he brings that level of disagreement consistently, not just to board members and their opinions, but to the very institutions the town relies on, peer review engineers, legal counsel, um, various town officials. That's where I think you need, you know, the voters, you know, I, this information is not of easily available to the entire town and maybe not even always apparent to people who don't attend the meetings regularly. You know, maybe Paul, Paul's been in a, plenty of meetings, you know, she probably has maybe seen enough to have an opinion. I've been in regular session. I've been in executive session. I think we all need to understand, you know, the, the it's not all on the positive side of the balance sheet. I mean, the, these, these, the aspect, these aspects of the performance, in my opinion, could have a serious impact. And I think the events bear out that they do have a serious impact and the potential for further serious impact if they aren't remedied. At the interview, I asked Matt if there were any, was anything in particular he would change about his performance on the board. He neglected to answer that question, essentially. So that's, uh, that's pretty much all I want to say about that. I just want to you know, drive home the, 
that point. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, as an attorney, I'm not always right. And I think it's the duty of members to question attorneys, question engineers, question staff if they disagree. And I think that in Lunenburg, one of the issues has been that we, and I'm not calling it on the planning board because I think there's a generic issue as far as just accepting various people's opinions without questioning them. And I think that it's important on any committee in this town that people have the ability to question the selectmen, question the planning board, question the town manager, question any of the officials in town in order to try to get to information. And maybe one of the things he was questioning got down to an issue that wasn't very important at the end, but the question needed to be asked. And um, I just think that that's something that, that needs to be done. And I would dare say, based on the publicity that will come out as a result of this and it being on YouTube, Mr. Allison will be made under, aware of people's concerns about how he pr approaches the concerns that other people have said. So, no, I think that's, that's a good point. I guess the distinction I'm raising is, is questioning an opinion here or there versus questioning the value, questioning the intention, que that sort of thing, um, to the point where in any given interaction, I, you know, I'm just going to make this a little hypothetical. I don't think attorneys are any good. I don't think, I think they're, there's, you know, I don't think their agenda is aligned with the town's interest. And 95% of what they say, I don't buy it. When you approach not just one, but multiple town institutions like that, yes, there's always value in another opinion in a, po in a foil, but there can also be um, consequences to, to approaching institutions like that constantly where it's not about one opinion or this that which I totally agree you got a you got a question you, and yes you got to think about what people's motives in different situations are but if we got an institutional structure which requires that we collaborate get aligned and follow a plan after you know collaboration involving questioning and you know tough questions and review of things I, I just think that this this other attitude where you're, where you really just don't fundamentally believe in the value of a peer review engineer or a or a town council or whatever the thing is, I think that's, that can be a dangerous posture to have a board member in. Any other comment? So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of appointing Mr. Allison for the point of next year's May election, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so it's five to three. We will let Mr. Allison know. Again, I don't, I don't think I, is Celeste here? Yes, she is. Oh. I want to thank her for coming forward again, and I, I really do encourage you. I, I think all of us said that we were really impressed by, by what we saw, and so I hope you do continue. Uh, I know that there will be a place in the town, and hopefully on the planning board uh, for you, uh, but thank you for coming forward. I just wanted to say, in the spirit of disagreeing and moving on and being able to work together, I will welcome Matt back to the board and respect your opinion. And like I said, it's a short term. If everything doesn't work out, then they run for election and it's up to the public. So. That's exactly true. That's I mean, right. There is, That's right. Thank you, thank you, Dame. I appreciate that. And thank you to the planning board for coming this evening. Yeah, sure. Is there anybody here for the 715 poll hearing? There is. Do you mind if we do some appointments of reserve officers first? And, and Okay. So we're going to skip down to that because we have a lot of people in, in the audience. So <clears throat> we're looking to request to ratify the appointment of police officer reserves and a police sergeant. And as always, with everything police officer involved, I would uh, invite the police chief, uh, Chief Marino, to the podium. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The presence of police here is merely a coincidence. <laughs> uh, I'd like to invite the three reserve officers up first. There are three Certainly. potential uh, candidates. Uh, 
Julianne Salas, uh, Katrina Hart, and John Morreale, Jr. Good evening. Good evening. Um, well, I'll make this quick, as I know you got a tight schedule tonight. But give we, give any give do you know a honor to the people here. So don't rush on our account. Okay. <laughs> we, as you know, uh, my intent was to hire really good people who want to be police officers in the future, full-time police officers. We took that a step further this time with these three candidates. Actually, we have five candidates that we did that with. The other two haven't passed the physical or gone through the physical and the PATS test yet. Um, these three candidates were going through the Reserve Academy, which is now the, uh, has been increased to 331 hours. And while they were going through the Academy, they volunteered to come in and, and train with us as, as interns. So they've had already had some experience within the building and out on the road. I thought that would be a good idea because, you know, we, first of all, we get to know them right away before we even think about appointing them as reserves, um, see what their work ethic is going to be like, and so on and so forth. And, and these three candidates were just outstanding. And uh, I bring them to you for that reason because of their educational background as well. All three of them have bachelor's degrees in law enforcement, and I, two from Fitchburg State, and then John from University of Mass at Lowell. Um, I think they're highly qualified for that job, for a part-time job. It'll give us a good look at them over the next few, few years if uh, we decide to increase the size of the police department. <laughs> I think we're gonna have some good candidates to pull from. Uh, or if somebody retires, and that's quite possible. That could possibly happen. I know I'm going, and you'll throw me out in another six years anyway. You'll have to <laughs> make it that long. So, uh, anyways, with that, I'd like to ask you uh, to appoint them as, as uh, reserve police officers. Uh, I will ask the town manager for her recommendation. Um, I. Well, uh, the request is for you to ratify my appointment. So I have already made my appointment of these three individuals to the Office of Reserve Police Officer. And I would entertain a motion from the board. I would make a motion to ratify the town manager and the police chief's recommendation for the poli uh, Reserve Police Officers. Oh, I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the ratification of the appointment of the reserve officers, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Congratulations. Welcome, Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Thanks. All right. It's a happy place. <laughs> uh, Try for two for two. Have a seat. Let me, uh, if I can just call Jeff Thibodeau up. Um, Uh, again, um, I want to surround us all with the most competent people, the most qualified people. Again, an example of that is Jeff. Um, and before I go, I'd just like to acknowledge, um, uh, rec recognize his father who's sitting in the audience here. He's the former police chief in Shirley two chiefs ago, uh, was there his entire career, and a person I, t I hold in high regard. Paul Tibble, I'm sitting right there. Um, you know, again, Jeff, uh, graduate of Fitchburg State, bachelor's degree, he's been with us for two and a half years. He was with the Townsend Police Department, I believe, for 10 years. He was a detective over there. Uh, we made him the detective. Uh, he's got a very extensive uh, background with uh, police training, particularly in the field, uh, with professional development. He's been to the DEA, uh, two-week DEA drug school. Uh, he's been to crime scene search schools. Uh, he's been to the Reed uh, method of interrogation and interviewing school, and on. And I just I can go on and on and on. Highly trained individual, uh, awesome work, uh, great personality, just uh, uh, somebody who's really going I think going to go a long way with our police department and with our town. And I'm really proud to even have him on my staff. Always have been, and I want to make him a sergeant because I think I think he's one of the most qualified people for that job. Uh, I want him part of my command staff. And again, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying to bring the police department 
uh, into, into that community policing philosophy, uh, and he's going to help us do that. Um, sooner or later here, we, we've been budgeted for 14 people. We finally have a person that won the academy yesterday. One, if he retires, or if he, <laughs> not retires, if he graduates and we don't have any retirements, uh, we're finally going to be able to make that 14th position, which is a community outreach position, which that's another person who will work under Jeff. Um, that's a person who will be, his job will be really dedicated to problem solving and partnership building, as is everybody, including these new reserve ca candidates who you know, have gone uh, to college you know, so recently. Uh, so that's, what we're, that's where we're trying to move. We're trying to move to problem solving, uh, uh, community partnership, uh, that philosophy. Uh, Jeff's going to be help help me to be a part uh, help me to to make that happen to be a part of our command staff to make that happen. Uh, it's going to help our police department in terms of how we supervise everybody. It's going to give us another level of supervision, and that's why uh, I want to make a massage. Just a question: Does this appointment, if it gets approved this evening, that would completely fill the senior staff at this point with yes. the number of the lieutenant and three yeah, and sergeants, correct? Four sergeants. Four sergeants. Yep. Okay. That'll fill my table of organization oh, the way it sits. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we get this 14th guy out of the academy, without anybody leaving, we'll be in great shape F for a while. F Fiscal 15 is actually the second year that we've had four sergeants budgeted, but the first time that we've had the opportunity to fill the position. Um, and i just like to say, as the chief said, Detective Thibodeau has, has been with the town for a fairly short period of time, but has made a, a very positive impact um, on the department, has become a leader in the department in a very short period of time, has done an excellent job working, I think particularly with the younger members of the community. That's kind of what stands out to me, and uh, I'm very pleased to be able to make the appointment of him as a sergeant this evening. Excellent. I will say before I ask, entertain a motion that uh, you can always tell kind of leaders that you have in departments by the people that they surround themselves with and you've made excellent choices i hear wonderful things from from the the people of lunenburg the residents of lunenburg and i i really greatly appreciate and uh, acknowledge the way you've made the position chief your own uh you know after somebody's been there for so long and had such a you know a, a position in the community to make it and not be the same person, be your own person and surround people with your own management. I, I do applaud that and I do greatly appreciate that. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I would entertain a motion on the ratification of this appointment to uh, Detective Thibodeau to Sergeant Thibodeau. I would make a motion to ratify uh, the town manager's appointment of uh, Mr. Thibodeau to police sergeant. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion or comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Mr. Thank Congratulations. You Thank you. Thank Mrs. You. Bertram. I just want to take I just want to take one second, Chief, to echo Mr. Alonzo's um, comments. I it, it was funny last night. I was talking with some neighbors, and you are doing a phenomenal job in public outreach and making people understand what's available to them from a safety perspective, how the department can help them in their day to day lives. I, and I hear that the coffee with the chief is a phenomenal success, and the Facebook page and the open communication. And I just want to thank you for for how you've established such a, a, an outreaching police department uh, I think you've done a phenomenal job well thank you thank you for saying that <laughs> all of you have been very supportive too and it's key I, I really appreciate you know this uh, environment where we're just trying to work together really appreciate that though thank you very you much good work thank you, thank you. okay 715 nowhere near on time <laughs> uh, Whole location hearing for Verizon New England Inc. and Fitchburg Gas and Electric Company Unitil on Weatherby Street. Uh, the public hearing, and this was posted and given notice to abutters July 9th, 2014. You are hereby notified that a public hearing 
will be held at the Joseph F. Pilata Meeting Room, Lunenburg Town Hall, second floor conference room at 7.15 p.m. on Tuesday, the 22nd day of July. Upon petition of Verizon New England Inc. and Fitchburg Gas and Electric Company, Unitil, request permission to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along and across the public way or ways. Weatherby Street on the southeasterly sideline, relocate J.O. Pole number T.4 slash E.4, approximately 92 feet southwesterly from the central line of Young's Road, and then on the northwesterly sideline, place new J.O. pole number T.2S slash E2S, approximately 22 feet southwesterly from the center line of Baker Street, in the way or parts of ways designated in said petition, along which designated route of line you are an owner of real estate as determined by the last preceding assessment for taxation. Okay. My name is Robert Perham. I work for UC Synergetic. We're a contract firm for Verizon. Okay. We're handling their request. Uh, we're moving pole four forward five feet. The old pole is rotted, and this brings it more in line with the existing poles on the street. And the other pole, two, 2S, we're placing an additional pole to provide support, guiding support for the poles across the street, which are currently guide into a tree which is rotted. Okay. Thank you for providing the poll locations in enough detail this time so we can actually know where they're going and where they're coming from. So is this just maintenance type work? Somewhat, yeah. Okay. The, the pole four is a maintenance of a rotted pole, but it brings it down the hill in line with the rest of them. Creates, doesn't create a problem with uh, uneven guying. Okay. Does anybody on the board have questions about the plan? While I appreciate that there's more detail, I would still like to see even more detail. And the only question that I have is the pole that is being relocated and you show the prior location and the new pole, but across the street, you're showing a new pole location. The only question I have is, are there any driveways within that area? Are there any? No. Okay. It's so all heavily wooded. Okay. There. Okay. And the only question I have is, um, Will you be removing the pole fairly quickly? I, and I, I use the term fairly quickly because I realize you have to get utility, electric, cable, telephone, all to get all the wires off. But I, I know in Massachusetts there's an would, issue of poles. They would do this as quickly as they possibly could, but I can't answer when it would get done. Okay. Are any are any guys on any of these two poles, or are these freestanding, both of them? The the guying is on the pole across from the new pole two S, guide into two trees across the street, which appear to be rotted. That's why they needed the pole there. They're trying to get away from using tree guys and whatnot. Right. No, but of the two, of the two poles, will the poles themselves have any guys on them, or they just be freestanding poles? The new one two S will have a. An anchor and a guy placed. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> any other questions from the board? Uh, are there any people in the audience who want to speak either for or against this poll placement? That would be no. So uh, I would entertain a motion on the request for a uh, the pole move two pole locations, one moving, one new one new lo one new pole, one relocated pole. I would make the motion to approve the location relocation of one pole and uh, location of a new pole, as provided on the map to our meeting tonight. Second. Any further comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. This is the clerk of the selectman does that one. Well, these are all clerks. Oh, are we signing anything? Was it just, all right.
sure. Uh, request to authorize chair to sign the MSBA funding agreement when available. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Combs. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let me begin by just thanking everyone for your ongoing support of the project and, and to the community, of course, for bringing us to this point as well. What we've been working on the last several months are uh, moving the design process forward. And I know Mr. Alonzo and, and Mr. Matthews before him uh, were uh, are good about reporting out that progress to you and what's going on with the school building uh, committee. I come today to um, make sure that you're aware that we have received a fully executed a project scope and budget agreement and the next step in the process is uh, to the uh, the MSBA will be issuing issuing a funding agreement as well a project funding agreement um, I sent to the committee I believe you probably reserved it the template that they will fill in all the blank spots with that information is brought from all the previous documents and then sent out to us I've been in communication with the MSBA they are unable at this time uh, to provide me a, a date that we should receive that. Uh, I have been notified that their legal department is working on that and that it, the process is moving forward. But I come today on behalf of the school building committee to ask that the, the board consider authorizing a member, uh, typically it's been the chair, to sign the document upon receipt. Uh, given all the summer schedules, etc., we felt that was a prudent request uh, just to continue to proceed um, uh, through this process and uh, continue to make sure that we stay on schedule with the project. And the surveyors are going to be out tomorrow, uh, so you'll see a lot of uh, people with orange vests on the school property uh, starting to put in some stakes uh, to get into that enabling package. So that's the request and I'm happy to respond to any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? Then I would entertain a motion to the request of authorizing the chair to sign the MSBA funding document when it arrives, which is impending. I would make a motion to authorize the chair to sign the MSBA funding agreement when it becomes available. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So just alert me when it is available. I and will, I sir. will. Uh, make arrangements to Excellent. sign it. And I want to just take one more moment to thank uh, the town manager and all the uh, uh, the workers here at uh, Town Hall for their assistance through this process as well. This has been additional work for uh, almost every department in town and uh, we really appreciate everyone's support and the effort they're providing in order to make this uh, new building a reality for our, our students. So thank you all. Yeah. And thank you too. Okay, uh, so we are 725, getting closer. <laughs> uh, interview candidates for the various committees, Council on Aging, Personnel Committee, and Public Access Cable Committee. Now we have, I'm assuming the remaining people in the audience, unless you're intently interested in selectman meetings, <laughs> and historically saying, I'm guessing you're here for interviews. <laughs> uh, Yes. <laughs> so, right. So we have more talent bank forms because not everybody responded than we have people. So I want to make sure that I know who is here. So I'm going to go through these. And if you are here, just shout out extremely loudly. Uh, I'm going to go from this list. There you go. Susan Andrews. Jennifer Ayers. Okay. Jeffrey Bako. I know Mr. Bertram is not here. Scott Chase. Betty De Giacomo. Here. Where is here? I just want to, okay. I'm putting dots and trying to see at the same time. <laughs> Jacqueline Dwyer. Just a little more. <laughs> Do, those are the most formidable. <laughs> Todd Dwyer. 
Sarah Grant. Caroline Griffiths. Diane Grenard. I know it's not here. Sheila Holt. Renee Lafayette. Lois Lewis. <laughs> Pete Lincoln. I know it's not here. Kevin McNally. Present. Cheryl Moisen. Valera. No. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll have to get that on your interview part. <laughs> Elizabeth Murphy. Diane Naud. Ryan Savupa. Oh. oh, we have you twice. You said Cheryl Valera? Yes. All right, so we're interviewing you twice according to this form. Yeah. All right, so let's not. Lynn, I know you're here. And Steve Walker. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six people. So one's a support person. Oh, he's mine. Driving steady. <laughs> All right. I feel like, okay, now we've set the stage. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so. I think we have some vacancy that we can find for you to fill. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Betty, you are first. Yes, at the microphone, please, so the people at home can hear you as well as ourselves. It's okay. In a voice projecting and booming. All right. If you would introduce yourself and your address and then say a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the Council on Aging. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that just qualifies you. It doesn't yes. why you want to be on it. But my name is Elizabeth DiGiacomo. Uh, Betty. Everyone calls me that. Everybody calls me something different. Somebody call, some call me mom, some call me nanny, some call me great nanny, and um, I'm, I have a brother. <laughs> what would you really like to know about me? What I, I'm at the center about three days a week. I volunteer on Monday and Tuesday. I do Meals on Wheels. I take care of, well, try to take care of their library and their plants. I don't really have a green thumb, but they make me do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, it actually saved me to, to, to do that three days a week. On Thursday, I play Mahjong, something that I just learned in September. It's great to learn new things. I'm 80. And um, you know, you have to keep the old brain ticking. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy it there. The people are really good. But I have a lot of ideas that I would like to put forward. Uh, there's such a stigma in this town about uh, with old people using the van. Some of them that are not so old that can't drive anymore say, well, that's just for old people. So I want to <laughs> see if I can throw things out there. I ride the van, by the way. I've lived here. I, I was widowed five years ago, almost five years ago. And I came to my daughter and my son-in-law. I have a wonderful life here. I'm from New York, I guess you can tell. Where and in New York? Rockland County, okay. right over the yep. Tappan Zee Bridge. Yep. All right. And uh, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going Sunday. I'm going back for two weeks because I have a wedding in New Jersey. I'm very busy. I'm very active. And um, I just want to say that I stopped driving on my own. And I don't have a car. but. The van has helped me so much. And I want to throw it out there to people. You don't have to be incapacitated. I'm far from incapacitated. And, and I love having the van. The two drivers are great. They're great. And everything I found here has lifted me because when I came almost five years ago, I was flat on my back. I took care of my husband for four years. He had Alzheimer's. And when I came here, I started to live again, and because I joined, I don't know if you're familiar with Massachusetts Healthcare, mm -hmm. but they have a widowhood group, and they really, I have to say, saved my life. And right from them, I came, I came to Eagle House, and it's just been wonderful. And I want to give back. That's all. That's why I want to do it. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. Hold on. Stay there in case anybody has any questions. Oh. Does anybody have any questions? I think you answered the, the question I was going to uh, I will ask each candidate is what do you think that 
that the board that you're going for needs and then how can you address it and it your concept of transportation and everything is that's, that's one of the things yes and I mean it's so wonderful today before I got ready to come here I was out there playing bocce with <laughs> seven other people <laughs> so I mean I use the facilities you have to throw it out there you really do it's great I want to I want to thank you for coming forward um, I your energy is is contagious and I think it's fantastic that you that you want to um, do more it sounds like you're already doing a lot um, in volunteering three days a week and did you have you said one of the ideas is the van did you have any others off the top of your head that you could share well um, I really have to get with people okay. on it but uh, this talk about putting a uh, <laughs> um, somebody told me the other day that they're not interested in bocce but they want other things and they're talking about a horseshoe pit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh, you know but people have to be patient you can't you can't do everything right you know but I think I'm so happy I have four great-grandsons in your school and they're doing so well and uh, I just love it here I really do I would echo Mrs. Bertram's statement that your energy is definitely contagious. So thank you. I don't sit a lot. <laughs> Very much. My son-in-law can attest to that. <laughs> and your and your energy and your independence is great. You know, my my dad this next Saturday turns eighty-three. So uh, you know, he has a lot of the same kind of spirit. So thank you. You have to because remember one thing: a moving target is harder to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think council on aging has a new motto. <laughs> there we go. Is that it? That's that's I it. Think. I would entertain a motion on. Oh no. No, we, 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 we want to finish. We, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, At the end, we we, we want to do all the interviews. See, I got so carried away. <laughs> right here. Mr. McNally. <laughs> the bar's been set very high. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my name's Kevin McNally. I live on 68 Hemlock Drive. I've been in town for 54 years. In 2003, we lost both my parents and our, our family trust fund. Um, we started doing things at the senior center. We fed seniors Thanksgiving dinner, and we recently fed a group of seniors from there, um, uh, St. Patrick's Day luncheon, and it's just such a grateful feeling to walk in there and, and work with the people and um, see parents of people I grew up with in this town, and um, they all remember me and I remember them. Um, we've all changed a little bit, but we're, personalities haven't really changed. And uh, I, I'm just grateful to do something for them. I've been on many boards. I've been on the boards, uh, uh, rules and regulations with Pollard and the Hickory Hills and uh, the board of directors for the Wallace Civic Center. And I'm a self-employed business person. And I figure that, you know, having, uh, being able to work with numbers and business and uh, it might be something that could assist the group that's currently there. Um, totally not up to speed with what their needs are, but in time, uh, being younger than most of the folks that are on board there, in time I, I feel that I can be a great asset to help them out in the future and who knows, I mean I'm not far away from joining there every day and enjoying myself there as I try to uh, work my way towards retirement. What kind of business are you in? I own a sporting goods store down Team Sports on John Fitch Highway. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board for Mr. McNally? By the way, you did very high in the energy level, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very energetic Just person. <laughs> When we, get to, when we get to the now younger members of the interviewees today, they are the ones who really have to step, <laughs> step up. Step it up. <laughs> I have energy. I just got done playing nine holes of golf, too. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I think this is excellent, and nobody has any? No? Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a great night.
people. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do you mind if I call you Lynn instead of Linda, or do you prefer Linda? Lynn Vickery. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is um, officially Linda Vickery. I live on 71 Arbor Street. Um, I go by the name of Lynn. Most people in town know me th by that. Um, I have two children. My daughter's graduated with an associate's degree at UNH. She's, we're driving her out to California in a day. Um, and my son is a, going to be a sophomore at Lunenburg High School. Um, I've been in town for 25 years. Um, I was asked by a colleague and a friend to join her, and the colleague is Cheryl Valera, who I've worked with in the past. I've also worked with Jamie Toll at Digital um, in Human Resources, and they've asked me to, if I would entertain working um, on a personnel committee. So I've been in doing Human Resources for maybe 20 plus years. Um, I had my own consulting business for a while when my children were small, and um, now I'm working for a biotech company in Bill Rook and Mass. Have you met with anybody in the personnel committee? So you, do you know what their charge is? No. Mr. Chairman, I, because the uh, personnel committee has been dormant so long, I think part of my pitch was that uh, people with extensive backgrounds may help us determine what. <coughs> what Fair enough. Be. Okay. And I think the other thing, just as a point of reference, is that in the past the personnel committee represented all employees <coughs> except for the police I think originally and then as the town got more and more unionized the personnel committee had fewer and fewer um, but it's a very important committee and appreciate you coming forward with your background okay yeah more more than other committees I think it's a more technical committee because it you know deals with uh, very instead of policy bases more specific things uh, as it applies to the non-union employees okay so and I think, as Mr. Toll talked about, you know, possibly expanding the scope of what the personnel committee is working on, you know, looking at the evaluation process and how you can assist with that and, and different um, beyond just dealing with individuals out, that are outside of union contracts, but looking at, you know, what can we do in town to improve processes and forms and, and put, put processes so best in place. So practices is exactly. what you're looking for. Exactly. Right. One of the ideas I had, Mr. Chairman, was uh, to perhaps uh, enlist the, the HR group and the HR expertise to help us attract and encourage people to volunteer for all of our committees and mm -hmm. boards, oh. et cetera. So uh, it's, it's kind of one of the things that I had. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's great. And I think with over 20 years in human resource, Experience. I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or you convince a whole bunch of people for a lot of years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very Anybody much. Anybody else have any questions before she leaves the podium? Thank you. Okay. As you were already named uh, by your cohort, so Cheryl Valera. Now, just, uh, Cheryl, just before you start, I think I want to clear up. We actually have two talent bank forms. One Cheryl Moisson and one Cheryl Valera, and I think they're two different people. Yeah, it looks it. it oh, looks really? It yeah, a yeah. Oh, well, so that's ironic. But yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought what it was a recent odds? name change. No. Okay. <laughs> well, it is a recent name change. I got married about almost three years ago, so I still keep the Moisson on my resume because that's how people know me in my career. So, spell but you're not how? Spell how? How is your maiden name? 
M O I S A N. That's very. <laughs> I actually studied the and handwriting. It, and it isn't. And it is the same person or really? a different no, address? No, different, different, person. different person. Yeah, this is she lives on Goodyear Street. Street. <laughs> it's not like we have John Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no wow. ide identity theft here. Yeah, exactly. Hope she, hopefully she, she won't marry one of my here. husband's relatives. <laughs> wow. Okay. So this is the Cheryl from Fire Road. Yes, Fire okay, Road. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Thank you for inviting me. My name is Cheryl Valera. No longer use the Moisson. Um, I live on 70 Fire Road 24B on Lake Shirley. I've lived in Lunenburg for about two and a half years now. Um, I've lived most of my life in Lemonster right next door. Um, I love living in Lunenburg. It's a great little town and I, it's a nice change from Lemonster and the busyness over there. I've been in human resources for about 18 years. I've led um, multiple human resources organizations as director level and vice president level. Right now I have my own consulting company, but I'm currently consulting for one client full time right now and they're going to be hiring me um, full time in October as their senior director of HR programs and operations. Um, I am solid in all aspects of HR because I've worked at companies that have had 50 employees up to 1,400 employees. So I'm used to being very hands-on with the smaller companies and used to being strategic with the larger companies. So I roll up my sleeves and I do what needs to be done. Excellent. Any questions from the board? Again, with the same thing as Ms. Vickery. I mean, if you have that kind of background, I mean, obviously, I think the skill set is clearly, clearly there for this mm -hmm. position. So yeah. I appreciate. Thank you for coming you. forward. Oh, awesome. and I would also like to um, vouch for Lynn because she and I worked together um, <laughs> at a company that was very, very challenging. I started there when they had about 185 employees, and there was no HR presence at all when I started. And I hired Lynn about two or three months later, and we put every aspect of the HR Foundation in place with a lot of challenges <laughs> that um, are not normal for a an, an regular company. Um, a lot of foreign nationals, a lot of immigration, things like that. I'm not, I'm sure we're not going to be dealing with that here, <laughs> but just to show you that, you know, our experience uh, covers a lot of area. It's and, very, and Lynn, very uncommon. Lynn is top notch. It's very uncommon that we have one interviewee vouch for another interviewee. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seeing as how you hired her, <laughs> uh, that's, that's good. So I appreciate that. So thank you to you and to, to both of you. Okay, um, I think our, we, our one concern is that Lynn and I are both the type of people where we're going to come in and we're going to see all this work that needs to be done and we're going <laughs> to spend way too much time on it but um that's just the type of people we are we want to make sure that things are done right and, well, that's good. and things are correct. i was going to end that sentence for you saying that you that you and lynn were going to see all this work to be done and you were going to do it so that, that, that was the way well, that's why i hope that was going to we, end we, we will but <laughs> well hopefully it won't be that much that obviously there's work to be done but hopefully it won't be that much and with your experience hopefully you know the the experiences that you bring from your your professional jobs will make this easier than somebody learning it from. Yeah, you know, and I think actually. both of us, um, with doing consulting plus our our previous jobs, we have a lot of templates and things <laughs> that we've been able to implement in multiple companies, and we have a library of things that we can easily roll out. So That'd I think that's a benefit to the town as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're Mr. welcome. Chairman, I think the other, the other part on the conversation is that this is going to be support to the town manager because one of the identified needs is, is HR support. Uh, it's so that she can be uh, the town manager instead of the HR manager, <coughs> although she'll still be there on the day-to-day -day basis. So appreciate your bringing your expertise to this. Okay. Um, I do have a question. Um, what are your goals for this committee? What are the most important things that need to be addressed first? Good interview question. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the two people I want yeah, to answer Yeah, the two people it who need to it. answer that, Evan. <laughs> Tom. Okay. I'm sorry. Tom. Yes. We were just asked a question, and we felt that it was you and Carrie. Oh, okay. What are the it? most important things that you feel the committee will have to address first? 
Oh, I would definitely defer to the town manager because I think this is a role. The reason why the personnel committee is in a uh, non-defined state right now is because it's, as Mr. Ebersol said earlier, because its charge used to be many more, it used to be responsible for many more employees, and then as they became unionized, and now they have many unions, it's a smaller number, and I think we need it to morph into something else, and what that is, I think, I'll defer to the town manager about what are things she might be looking for uh, the, the committee to do, and I think it'll be whatever her answer tonight, I think it'll be a living thing when you get the committee together. <coughs> I'll let you answer. Well, we don't have a human resources department. We have a payroll office. Mm -hmm. So most of our human resources is a result of payroll's needs and, and um, employee benefits. So some of the, the biggest issues are we don't have up-to-date job descriptions. Um, we don't have a lot of standardized policies and procedures just for hiring. Um, standardized forms we don't have that we could use help with our we don't use an employment application so much but mostly because we don't have one that's up to date so I, I think a lot of it is is really just real basic policies that you that any HR department would okay. have yeah. and um, I have done all of that before and I, I'm pretty sure Lynn has done that as well so um, we can probably help with that very quickly Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Ayers. Hi. So, Good evening. Uh, I'm Jennifer Peters Ayers, and I live at 136 Highland Street. And I've been here a little over 20 years, and um, I'm interested in joining the COA board um, for many reasons, but a little bit of my background is I was fortunate enough to um, open up this new building with Jean De Bruin. I was the site manager at the time. It was a, a short period of time that I, I worked for her. Unfortunately, I had to leave for a medical reason, but I, it was a wonderful experience. I got to know a lot of the seniors. Currently, I am running the logistics for Montachusett Opportunity Council Elder Nutrition. It's a big title, but basically you know it is the Meals on Wheels. And I've been with the Meals on Wheels, or a mock as we call it, Elder Nutrition, for about 10 years. And I've worked in different job capacities throughout the time. I started out um, in one of the meal trucks, driving and delivering meals, and then have moved my way up. Um, and. At this time, I've, I'm still working with several of the seniors um, here in Lunenburg that are on some of our committees. And um, so I've been very blessed with knowing them and um, seeing some of them, unfortunately, pass away, but um, you know, have enjoyed working with them. And um, so I'd really like to, uh, to give something back to my community here. And since I do have some good background and some good experience, I feel like I could I could help and have a voice um, and the things that I have learned um, and what I feel passionate about right now I'm on this committee out of Worcester County that's um, an elder abuse um, roundtable and we give conferences on trainings on elder abuse and um, there's several groups involved in that um, to include the DA's office and um, you know protective services in different communities and just a whole bunch of senior um, advocates and um, so I feel very passionate about that and another thing that we do through mock is we're working um, very actively on healthy living and um, healthy aging and so working with the seniors on having better quality of life and how to encourage you know being more active and um, so I feel like I do have some things I could bring um, but a lot of why I'm here is because I do feel um, like I've developed some nice relationships with the seniors here in this town, and I live here. And so it's nice to be able to give something back to the community where I live. Excellent. Any questions from the board? I just comment that my mother uh, received uh, Meals on Wheels when she was living in town, and uh, 
it, it, the meal was one thing, but it was the contact and, Absolutely. and, and the various people who were the delivery people yep. and made sure when she didn't answer the yep. phone what was going on or answer yep. the door. So yep. it's a great so the big part, piece part on the what we do is um, honestly um, the meal. You're right. It's it's important to have that nutrition, but the safety check piece is something that. Um, you know, we never leave a senior without, you know, we never leave the end of the day without knowing where everyone is. And, um, you know, we've had to call the police and have them checked, and unfortunately, things don't always work out in the positive. But you're right, it's the contact, it, it's a whole package. Because uh, some of the seniors don't see people, mm -hmm. so our drivers may be the only voice that they have. Um, they go out, they see the seniors, the seniors talk to them, and then they can come back and tell us if there's an issue or if, you know, there's a need there that isn't being met. And then hopefully we can connect them with the right services. Excellent. I agree. Any other questions? I want to thank everybody who interviewed tonight. Mike. First of all, Mike. yes, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you for coming forward again. You know, we rely heavily on volunteers in the town, and I thank you all, not only for your presence, but also, I think everybody interviewed really well. Like, everybody mm -hmm. said exactly what they were here for, and sometimes it's, I know some people are shy, and some people don't like to be on TV, but it's nice to be able to know so much up front so that we don't have lots of questions, and don't have to try to draw things out. Uh, I think the more outwardly people are, I believe personally the easier it is to fit into a committee and to work for the town because a lot of what you do is interaction with your fellow committee members and with the people, especially with the council on aging, the people that you're serving. So thank you all. I think there are, are there some? Can I just, I'll give you a recap of the two committees that are before you this evening. So the first, the personnel committee is a five member committee. Um, one of the five members is an employee representative. The other four are citizens at large and the appointments are joint appointments with the moderator so you have there are all five positions are vacant and my if I can give my editorial comment I think at some point we need to remove the employee representative on the committee because this is I mean my my policy or philosophy has always been we don't need to have employees as voting members of committees they're there to support the committees um, and it's it's odd to have a mem an employee on a committee that could make decisions that right. affect the employees. So are you so. saying that we would reduce the membership or replace that with a fifth member? No, at, at some have. point, but you would need to change the bylaw. I understand, um, but what would you, I mean, I what mean, is the, your initial thought, that we would reduce it to three people? No, no, that you would make make the appointments, but one of them needs to be an employee that we need to work on. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe that editorial comment just confused everything. You have four <laughs> appointments to make with the okay. moderator. There you, go. you have um, five people that are interested. As of this evening, you have interviewed three of the five. Okay. You interviewed one back in March, Renee Lafayette, and the two ladies this evening. Okay. Can, so can we work on getting the other two people? Yes, we tried to get everybody here tonight. Okay. and So then we and won't be making any appointments tonight. Because we have not interviewed everybody who has submitted. So we are, it's a positive thing to be backlogged on interviews. But <laughs> we are, so that's good. So uh, the, the Council on Aging is an 11 member committee. Um, there are three existing members who we've sent out forms to to see if they are interested in reappointment. I don't believe that any of the three are, but we don't have the forms back. So right now we have um, n not counting those three. You have four vacancies, and you have a fifth that you haven't that is in the process of getting on your agenda to be accepted. So they are the Council on Aging is in a difficult position right now with so many vacancies. So we have some members that are serving in holdover capacity. We have some that that aren't able to do that. So they could use some appointments. At this point in time, um, you have 10 new people that are interested, and you've interviewed six of the 10. And how many vacancies are there? 
four right now. Four existing, um, another one in process, and probably three additional as of August 15th if we don't get the forms back. So I'm weighing the balance here. Uh, obviously, I, if people have submitted talent bank forms, I want to interview them. But I also, we, we want to make sure that we get them. But if we can't schedule them in a timely way, we may have to start making appointments because the Council on Aging obviously needs a quorum to have their meetings. And if they're in jeopardy of not having that, mm. that takes priority to me than interviewing everybody. So if we can try to get people on the agenda, are they, are they meeting, do they need to be appointed, do people need to be appointed tonight for the Council on Aging? Well, they, they've wanted people appointed since the beginning of July. Their next meeting, they meet the first week, so the first week in August, the first Tuesday in August, which would be August 5th, right. that um, they meet during the day, so before your meeting on the 5th. But we don't have another meeting until the 5th that evening, and even then when we're going to be at the, presumably we're going to be at the, the pipeline public seminar, whatever we're calling it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're not going to be able to do this till the 12th. So the question becomes from the board, you know, do we want to select some people without having interviewed everybody? I, I want to understand, and I know it, this question has been raised, but there's a something in the Council on Aging's own bylaw relative to appointments and recommendations. And can you just highlight, it's not a town bylaw, but I right. thought that there was something within the Council on Aging's own bylaws that they've adopted that they make a recommendation. Yes, and they they have they have made a recommendation. And I actually thought I had put that in the packet, but I apparently I, I saw something. Thank you. Okay. Emailed it to us. At emailed some it point. separately right. to you. Okay. So the Council on Aging, their recommendation for new members um, would be Peter Lincoln. Jennifer Ayers, Betty DiGiacomo, Sarah Grant, who I don't, oh, it's, it's in our packet. Sarah Grant, you have not interviewed. Caroline Griffiths, who you previously interviewed. Kevin McNally, um, Cheryl Moison, the not, the, Cheryl not the one who's here this <laughs> evening. Don't you want to join this <laughs> And Diane Noud, who you have not interviewed. So there are two two people that they have recommended that you have not interviewed. And I'm I am not comfortable with appointing anybody we haven't interviewed. So I'm not I'm not about to do that. But um, I think we, I certainly could be entertained that we do appoint some of the people that we have interviewed that they recommended. Let me see the whole. What is the list? Mr. Chairman, I, I nominate, uh, move that we appoint Peter Lincoln, Jennifer Peter Ayers, Betty D Giacomo, and Kevin McNally to the Council on Aging. Do I have a second? I would second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of those appointments, just please. A, I'm sorry, what? just a discussion. I, I'm fine with it, but I, I thought I heard there were four vacancies. Right, and that's with four people. But there may be more as well. No, but didn't I hear five no, names? No. no. Okay, Four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It may have been the oh, way my, I spoke. My bad. I apologize. Could you repeat them again? So Peter Lincoln, Jennifer Peters Ayers, Betty DiGiacomo, and Kevin McNally. Okay. Okay, so you seconded it, mm -hmm. correct? Any further discussion or clarification or comment? <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So, thank you. Uh, you should see the town clerk to be sworn in uh, at your earliest convenience. That would make you an official member. We, we actually will send out appointment letters. Right. And so you should wait till you receive your appointment letter. Okay, so okay. I rescind everything I just said. <laughs> wait till you get your appointment letter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to, you know, as the chairman noted, we haven't interviewed anyone, everyone, and but we have individuals who are willing to, sh to serve on the personnel committee who have a wealth of experience and knowledge. Um, I'm certainly willing to try to another night to schedule the other two that we haven't interviewed. 
However, I, I'm not comfortable continuing to wait. So, um, well, we can start. We, we haven't filled all of them and we can make the, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm comfortable with the two interviews we had tonight too. Yes. So, I, so if you want to make that a motion, Mrs. Bertram. I I'm, would make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here. These two. I would make a motion that we appoint Linda Vickery and Cheryl Valera to the personnel committee. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Oops. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's too late to back out now. You're ready for <laughs> Yeah. Thank you both again. Thank you. And I, I guess wait for your, so I don't get scolded again, wait for your <laughs> appointment <laughs> letter. And then go see the town. No. Then go see the town clerk. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so if we can try to schedule any of the rest of them, especially PAC. PAC is the next one that's of critical importance. Uh, and I guess we're looking at the 12th for them. So are we canceling the meeting on the 5th or rescheduling it or uh, the reason I ask is you have a um, a hearing scheduled for that night and um, it's a, a liquor license Overcome. violation hearing so I have to to give a certain amount of notice to reschedule yeah. it and I don't know if I, I probably can do it for the 12th at this point but if you decided to meet on the 6th instead of the 5th I don't think I can do that. No, yeah, let's I do can't, it I can't do the. Let's do I it can't do the. So you just we're not gonna. Right. Well, we are gonna. We should. We're gonna meet. We should be posted. We, have to uh, be we should posted. be posted because right. we're meeting for the pipeline meeting. Correct. Right. Correct. In and the auditorium. Right. right. But you're not planning on conducting any of your business at that meeting. And Is except that except except oversight of the pipeline work, like minutes or. You know, many of Warrant, the uh, warrants or anything. That warrants needs. and anything. No, I think we'll li let the meeting be that. Okay. If that's okay with the board, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it gives me a good opportunity to say to everybody that about the proposed gas pipeline that we saw a, a presentation for last week, there will be a, another presentation and a, a again. Uh, Pub, it's not a hearing it's another presentation but a larger forum hopefully we can get people involved from town especially if you have questions if you've been approached by the gas company for surveys and potential pipeline work on your property that will be on august 5th tuesday august 5th at the high school auditorium starting at seven o'clock i believe yes so we want as many people as are interested in the pipeline project, uh, proponents or opponents, uh, this is your chance to get early information, get your voice heard, hear from the company about what they're planning, where they are. Uh, it'll be obviously additional information or, and more of a chance for interaction with the company than we had in our more formal presentation here last week. So again, Tuesday, August 5th, 7 p.m. at the Lunenburg High School Auditorium. Will we meet before that or just at 7 at the Just at there, at 7. Okay, minutes. Warrants. Uh, accounts payable warrant in the amount of $81.07. That must be year end. And another accounts payable warrant in the amount of $55,858.30. And action file issue, oh, contracts, it says. How come action file issues got missed? Let's say action file issues. None. Committee reports, Board of Health. Uh, Board of Health uh, is going to be meeting next week. Um, they're going to continue review of agricultural wells, and um, they have a, a situation where they uh, may be involving the agricultural committee, um, and we'll have an opportunity to work through um, a butter's issues as it relates to a farm and working with them. Okay. Building reuse. Uh, I attended the school board meeting last Wednesday and uh, had a good discussion about uh, the transfer of underutilized property, including 
the boundary lines required and the school board took the action and to talk with the uh, school building committee to come back with a uh, kind of an understanding of uh, exactly what property lines were required for the new school project which would by default then define unutilized property uh, at some point we're gonna have to expend some some dollars to actually have that surveyed before we go to any kind of uh, formal RFP or uh, di uh, disbursement process but in the meantime the, the ball is rolling and we're, everybody's aware of what's required okay. capital planning on hiatus no report <laughs> finance committee no report library board of trustees library board of trustees um, are on their summer schedule but um, they re sent out a notice that the state um, is going to uh, convene a committee to review state aid to public libraries they're bringing various librarians throughout the state for the different sizes of libraries uh, uh, people they're going to look at how other states fund libraries and they're, they're taking a year expect that it'll be june of next year to finish that so we've often talked about the funding schedule for the library so they're going to be reviewing that they haven't done that since 2007. excellent MPO. No report. Planning board. No report. The the charrette. They had a planning meeting last night to talk about the charrette. I was not able to attend, but the charrette on the village bylaw is July thirtieth. They changed the date. They changed the date. What did they change the date to? I think August twelfth, but I'm not sure. Well, that would not be. That's the on date Tuesday, of our meeting. On a Tuesday evening, uh, did or when? Well, I'm not really sure. Okay, well, okay, we, so we need well, to find we'll, out. Yeah, we need to find out. Could you? Okay, so we will find out. Okay. School committee. Um, the school committee met on July 16th. Um, Mike Mackin presented a diagram of the staging area that we set up as the project takes off. And he let us know that 22 of the 200 citizens invited to attend an, attended in a butters meeting to discuss the project. They're going to have another such meeting at the end of August for anyone. You don't, you don't have to be in a butter. You know, if you're interested in how it's proceeding, you're welcome to attend, but they didn't have the date. And again, they met with Jamie and Dave Matthews to discuss um, what Jamie just discussed. They um, discussed a strategy of providing personalized learning via technology by supplying all students in the new middle and high school with a personal computer but they're weighing the options and the affordability and the reasonableness and the practicality and they would like to have that in place when the new school comes online but they don't really know if they're gonna be able to do that. Um, the school system has a goal of incorporating community service learning at every grade level. You know the empty bowl project that the third grade does they want to have something at each grade level within the next couple of years and their professional development dollars and time are going toward that this year. And during a discussion of the superintendent's goals, it was proposed by Heather Soroka that a goal should be how to reduce out of district placements. One specific task was suggested is to survey parents who choose to choice out to find out you know why they're leaving and what adjustments the school can make to if not bring them back prevent other families from making the same decisions so that was one action item and there is a plan in the works for a groundbreaking ceremony for the new school in September or October stay tuned thank you sewer commission um, just repeating the notice that I read before that in the neighborhoods of uh, Pine Grove Road, Cross Road, Lakeview Avenue, Sunset Ave, and Harris Ave, as well as Pratt Street and Rennie Street. Uh, the Sewer Commission has uh, engaged Wright Pierce to oversee um, the engineering for that installation of the sewer project as approved by town meeting. Uh, surveyors will be out uh, flagging wetlands, topography, um, and that is this month through July 31st. If there's any questions, you can call the Sewer Commission, 582-4160. Excellent. And school building committee, we met last Thursday to uh, just basically approve uh, an interim uh, guaranteed maximum price from from Shawmut uh, Design. That all came in as expected. Uh, these are all fees that are um, 
slated to be expended for the first part of the project, so it includes site work and all the work that, that the public hearing that, that uh, Mrs. Luck was talking about that uh, Mr. Mackin of the School Building Committee held, uh, that whole preliminary work, site work, initial clearing, uh, initial anything to do with clearing the way for setting the foundation. And then, then we'll have another interim guaranteed maximum price f as the project goes f uh, forward with steel work and, and all the actual construction work too. So this was the first step. And as well as we had the superintendent here before us earlier this evening, that we're just one of the many flowing documents from the MSBA to sign seemingly about the same thing continually. But uh, that funding document, once we sign that, will keep us on target for the timeline that is already tight because they're trying to do work before school starts again so it doesn't impact Turkey Hill and they want to have all the site fencing up and everything and there is some electric work that has to be done that we're trying to get done so it doesn't impact the games played on the turf field where the lights are because there's some electrical work that has to be run underneath uh, that will be interrupted so that is where we are uh, to date they will be staking out things but the official as mrs luck also said the official groundbreaking won't be until uh later on in the early fall more than likely late summer early fall it has not been set yet you will know uh, i will report back at that point town manager reports or department reports i have one report this evening and it's also relative to the school building project um, we are in the process of doing an additional short-term borrowing for the school building project. I had tentatively scheduled to have the treasurer and our um, financial advisor to come to your August 5th meeting to give you an update on the financing of that project, but since we're not having that, I'm going to postpone that till August 12th, but we are taking in the process, or actually next week, we'll be taking bids on $2.5 million dollars um, worth of borrowing for the project. Since the borrowing has already been authorized, the board doesn't need to take any action, but I will need you to sign documents. Uh, but you can do that outside of a meeting because you've, that's, that borrowing has already been authorized. Um, and uh, at the meeting on the 12th, we'll come in and we'll, we'll talk about that and uh, what we see as the, uh, the impact to the taxpayer on the project going forward. This two and a half million dollars, uh, the impact obviously is very negligible. Um, and based on the cash, the updated cash flow that we received from the owner's project manager last week, it, it looks like the impact to the taxpayer is going to be as originally projected in, in the timetable, but we'll remind everybody of what that is at that meeting. But I, I will need you um, on August 5th I, I will bring the paperwork to you at Rep. Benson's meeting and have you sign that, and then we'll report on that on August 12th. That is our agenda. Any further public comment from the board? Two questions. One, um, when we approved the poll locations on Chase Road, uh, since it was a different uh, person different uh, the utility doing it instead of the telephone company they didn't come in with a plan but they were supposed to provide it with us with an as-built plan and I'm assuming we haven't seen that yet or? I, I'll check I don't okay. believe we have and then secondly um, we had talked at our last meeting about the planning board um, waivers for the school building and there were a couple of things Tom that you're gonna bring back to the committee I don't know if that was discussed we did discuss that uh, not with the planning board I discussed that with the school building and in fact we had a, a lengthy discussion because we were just meeting to approve that and I brought this up so and I have not finished that part of the planning board meeting uh, where the interviews for the applicants were because they also had a, an update with the peer review engineer at that my understanding is that First, let's take a back step that it was an informal review process that we, that this board suggested and that the school building committee uh, uh, acquiesced to. So there is no formal process of approval. 
but there were items noted and there was a lot of good information got from the peer review so it was worth doing but there is no formal process from any other board about waivers although they talked about it at their meeting the one last indication was and i know mr so you brought it up last week it was the sewer depth and there were indications and i asked this of the architect through the school building uh, committee chair the depth is a variance of between uh four foot is the recommend the required depth and there are some locations where it goes to three and a half feet so we are talking about a variance of six inches and they have agreed that they would put the firm insulation in there even notwithstanding the fact that the manufacturer uh, of the piping that they're going to be putting in says that three and a half feet is more than adequate but they will agree to uh, put rigid insulation and that was the remaining piece the other pieces were uh, the height of the building exceeds our zoning by one and a half feet I believe and then there was some talk about uh, signage at both the Oak Ave entrance as far as that it, it's larger than allowed by zoning uh, in a residence A, even though, of course, this is not really a residence, even though the building is in a residence A. Uh, these don't really require a formal variances because the project under the Dover Amendment does not require them. We will look and consult with the ZBA and the planning board, and we certainly request people's input, but they're not nothing's vital the one thing that is remaining that i have asked and that is the recommendation and i believe a good one because i think we've talked about it on this board that we not waiver the granite curbing at the entrance on both entrances because the whole intent is not only visual but it is one of that we have that in the plan because we can't mandate people, and certainly the town doesn't have the money, to put curbing everywhere. But as projects get done in individual parcels, that eventually, over time, and it's a long period of time, that the town will have proper curbs and sidewalks. And that is not on the plan initially, and we are going to be looking at that. That is the one thing that is outstanding, uh, to my understanding, that one last thing, and that we are looking for the architect to tell us what the cost would be because there is some indication that the cost, because Mass Ave is a state highway and digging up the end of a state highway may take a lot of extra permitting outside of this town's ability to waive fees. We, we can't waive state fees. So we are going to look at what that is going to cost and how that will be addressed. But everything else, I think, has been addressed either in an informal or not necessary manner the the part that i wasn't clear on is that i thought there was some sewer pipe that was actually going to be at 18 inches there's none that i'm aware of. i specifically asked that okay and so there is none that i, I am aware of it it's only inches. three and a half is the, the three and a half feet. right so right. from four feet to three and a half so we're talking about a six yeah, inch right. differential yes. right. and, and the other thing i drove by the entrance uh, by the brooks house to the schools does have granite curbing at the moment so right, right. It, that, that was the concern I pointed out to them is that you don't want to necessarily get into DOT because that could raise all sorts of other issues. Um, the third thing that I was going to raise is, um, and, and Mrs. Bertram had brought it up, um, the concern of the catch basin on Mass Ave, mm -hmm. which is outside of the school building district, about how we would go about communicating to the state about the need for that to be looked at so that didn't overflow and cause other issues. Um, the current plan is that they will not create any more flows than exist at the moment, but they didn't guarantee that in a large flood or rain situation that that wouldn't overflow. That's not Jack's purview because it's uh, Route 2A in the right. state. So I'm, I see Jack uh, Carey taking notes, so I'm assuming that's the proper way of bringing right. it. Right. We, the, the, just so people are clear, the reviewing the peer review engineer at the planning board said very clearly that the proposed plan from the architects for the school building project will improve the situation however given the fact that the downhill one which is off the site of the school totally and in on mass ave is that is the restricting flow that if there was a large enough storm it would continue to back up 
it would be better than it was before. So the, the project does not worsen it, it actually betters it. But there's only so much they can do. It's really that base, and as you pointed out, Mr. Ebersol, that really needs to be addressed. And if we need to contact Mass DOT to ask about that sizing, then we will do that. But, but then I'll sort of hold back a little bit because we've also talked about stormwater management and whether we don't necessarily want them necessarily to automatically make it bigger. But I guess if we had start the dialogue Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming they're having to do the same things we're going to be looking at doing on state highways as far as stormwater management, and maybe they can bring some best practices to sure. us as well. Agreed. Any other public comment? Then I will entertain any public comment from the public. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I will entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Good night, everyone. No meeting tomorrow, next week on Tuesday. The next meeting again will be at the high school auditorium, Tuesday, August 5th, uh, where Rep Representative Benson is hosting a gas pipeline uh, public seminar presentation with the Kinder Morgan Company. And hope to see you there. Thank you.